ladybugs are exceedingly good at getting rid of pests and therefore you want them in your garden. Whether you're introducing them through a program in which you purchase them or you're simply wanting just to attract ladybugs to the garden, I'm here to give you all the tips and tricks on how to do this. If you did not know, this channel is for everyone regardless if you're in Canada. Many people all over the world watch my channel and they gain benefit from it because it's science-based content in which you're gonna learn the ins and outs of gardening or just plant care in general. I think one of the first things I wanna say about getting ladybugs in the garden is that you really truly need to understand the life stages. If you see anything that looks like these photos here, it's fine. They're ladybugs, just in really ugly formats. That's number one. When you see a pest, actually determine what that pest is before applying pesticides, removing them, killing them, whatever protocol you have in place. Which leads me to the most obvious one, I'll get it out of the way, don't use pesticides. Whether they're organic or not, a pesticide is designed to deter pests and in particular organic pesticides are notorious for blanket killing everything, whereas conventional pesticides, technically speaking, are designed to just take out one very specific species or variety of pest. We know from experience that the reality of this is that pesticides have a trophic effect, meaning they affect multiple different ranges of uh, pests. But anyways, I digress. Organics are universally killing, generally speaking, or deterrent. Meaning if you apply a cayenne pepper spray or a garlic spray to deter aphids, very likely gonna deter the beneficials as well because it's just as gross to them as it is to the good guys. Number two is flowers. Now this is actually pretty darn specific when it comes to the flowers. The first checklist is actually flat top compound flowers, meaning things like yarrow, dill, fennel, things of that nature. These flowers are notorious for bringing the ladybugs in. They absolutely love them. Now the second recommendation is actually yellow flowers or orange would be like the second best option. So yellow or orange marigolds, wonderful. Calendula, they love. Now oddly enough, ladybugs don't just like flowers. They actually like very specific plants. And those plants are plants that are blanketing in nature, meaning things like thyme, or this basil back here. Mint is another really great example. And the reason for this is because they actually use this as shelter against potential predators. So a sheltering plant that mats, so thyme and mint are two that were very obvious to me, but other ones could be certain types of sedum, for example. Anything that has this blanketing type growth. Okay, so we know what flowers they like, color-wise and structure-wise. We know what plant formations they like, meaning blanketing without necessarily flowers. But how about their food source? We bring ladybugs into the garden because they're exceptionally good at getting rid of things like aphids. So we need to actually bring their food source into our garden to keep them around. This means getting plants that will encourage aphids to visit the garden, aka trap cropping, but for the beneficials. In my case, celery in my area, aphids love. And so the incorporation or intercropping of aphids will not only keep the ladybugs here, but will attract them into our garden, which will have a spinoff. They won't just take out the aphids, but they'll take out other pests that you may have in your garden because ladybugs have a wide range of things they like to feast on. I will place the list here. All things considered, it's definitely a predatory bug that you want in your garden. Okay, so I have one last trick to actually attracting the ladybugs, and then we'll get into how to actually keep those darn ladybugs here in our garden for next year. Tip for getting them here, and keeping them here, is actually water. Now, if you're new to the world of insect water, it's very specific. It's a very specific dish style that they can then feast on. You don't want to simply just do a bird bath or a pond, such as what I have. You want a dish that has maybe a sponge, preferably a sea sponge, something very natural in nature, or is relatively shallow that the pests can use as their water source. So this may mean just simply placing a dish with a sea sponge in it, 
or in some cases it actually may mean making a bird bath into a bug water center. Okay, so we know what flowers they like. We know what plants they like. We know what we need to keep them here food wise and water wise. But what do we do at the end of the season to keep them in our physical property area? The answer to this is hollow stems. Down here is my actual pumpkin trellis this year. Last year is a spaghetti squash trellis, but all of these stems are hollow inside. Zucchini is another great example of this. And these hollow stems, now these hollow stems actually act as a home for the ladybugs in the winter. When this plant dies back in the fall, you want to leave it in place, meaning you don't want to crack or snap or compost any of this plant. You just want to leave it on the trellis till the spring time. This will ensure the ladybugs have a healthy home to be in long term over the winter. If you don't want to leave plants in place and you want to give them an alternative place to stay, and the only reason why you want to leave this in place is if you say had a very bad powdery mildew issue or some sort of other pest issue. If you deem it not reasonable to leave in place for whatever disease issue or disease control you're using, then make a bug hotel. This doesn't have to be particularly fancy. It could be made from bamboo. You can buy them online. These bug hotels are going to give those ladybugs, along with other beneficial bugs, a place to hunker down over a cold Canadian winter or just their dormant season in general. I hope this helps you guys out when it comes to keeping ladybugs in your yard. If it did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.